Hello, everyone. Welcome to Town Meeting TV. I'm sitting here with Dan Higgins. He is the ambassador for Burlington um, for Puerto Cabezas. And he is here to share uh, his experiences and a little bit about the history of our sister city relationship here in Burlington. So thank you for being here with me, Dan. Um, well, first off, my first question is, how did we get a sister city? That's, that's, a, that's an important question. And, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't even aware that there are sister cities. And they've all, they've all have a particular history. It was in 1984 that the war was going on the way the Reagan administration was trying to overthrow the Sandinista government it, with a lot of illegal stuff, too. And, and people around the country were protesting. And in Burlington, they, uh, the people went to City Hall and they said, do we want to have a, a, a more reasonable relationship with people in Nicaragua? And so they asked for a sister city. And I don't really know what went on behind the scenes, but in 1984, Burlington became the sister city with Puerto Cabezas. Mm. And what's interesting about Puerto Cabezas, I can, I can hold, hold this up, is um, it's on the Caribbean coast. Oh, wow. it's, um, it's very different cultures than the, the Managua side. And it wasn't particularly uh, fond of the Sandinista government at that time. So Burlington, uh, very interestingly, had a, a kind of a, 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 a sister city that was not in sync with what people in Burlington thought the revolution was about. Okay. So it's been a very interesting learning curve. It has been a learning curve. Is there any, how would you describe those differences like best, like between not only the Managua side and the Caribbean coast side, but also like how Burlington understood the culture, specifically in Puerto Cabezas? I think, I think, I think for, for people in, in, uh, in Burlington, they knew the revolution they knew the, the aspirations of the Sandinista Revolution, and they were in supportive of it. Uh, when, you, when you get down to Puerto Cabezas, it's an area that has been uh, not a big part of... of it's, it's, it's been colonized. It's, it's the, the British have been down there for, for the 19th century. Uh, you've got a lot of different... Uh, Languages, mosquito is the most common one. Um, uh, Creole, you got Creole people, and so it's a it's it's a culture that has has evolved with different uh, religious beliefs, different food. Um, very very interesting place that's not completely part of Nicaragua. In eighteen, what is it, eighteen um, eighty five or so. Uh, a general, General Cabezas, uh, went in there and 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 took it over as part of Nicaragua. You know, re reassemble it. Uh, he he's not a a, a very um, popular name, and so the town now uh, is has been renamed the indigenous name Billy, Billy. Which, which was more of the indigenous okay. name. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's that's uh, you know as 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 much as I can know, and it was during the war. It was during the um, Reagan administration was putting a lot of funds into overthrowing the the uh, it was called the Contras, mm. uh, trying to overthrow the the um, the Sandinista government, and what we were seeing in the press were just pictures of um, the war. And and I and I was, as a as someone in in Burlington, was interested in what what's the place really like, uh, aside from all the, the wall, the war. So would you say, that that's kind of where you started to get involved in the sister city side of this relationship, or, was it after we had formally made it a sister city, or was it? It was it was formerly a sister city. Burlington was very involved in, in a boat, a peace boat that went down there. Richard Kemp was on that boat uh, taking supplies. 
uh, to Puerto Cabezas because uh, people were being, you know, they were out of their homes. It was, it was that kind of thing. And I, I, um, my first, my first um, attempt at trying to understand the place was, and I, and I do photography, and they're all posed, mm -hmm. and I, and so it was like, I was doing things like, um, here's the city hall in Burlington, oh. and here's the city hall in, mm -hmm. in Port. And you see Burmese in there. It was, like, it was that period of, of um, here's a diner that was very popular in Burlington. That's the um, Oasis Diner. Diner. There's a taco place down there now. And then this was the, them. And the, the, so they're all posing with what they do. Um, like really showing those similarities between. Trying to. And, the, and, and, and I went down. And this, this happened a, a, a different year. This is the nurses. And I, the first year I went down there, um, I, people were kind of hesitant and showing. I went back the next year and did a show. And then nurses came up and they said, we're part, of, we're part of this community. And so then I had to come up to the hospital here and find the women that do laundry uh, in the hospital. This, by the way, was sent down during the material aid shipment. The washing machine? From Burlington. I think it's a dryer. Maybe it's a washing machine. <laughs> oh. So, so it, it, kind of, it kind of expanded. Um, I did school kids, t t taxi drivers. Ha taxi drivers everywhere uh, basically uh, are kind of independent. Right? They don't like any kind of government telling them what to do. <laughs> and. Um, Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if you knew this woman. This was the woman in Burlington that she was called the hot dog lady. Oh, no. And so I did the, the one in Burlington, and then I found her counterpart down there. So a lot of what my um, interest in the sister city has been taking people from Burlington and introducing them to their counterparts. In fact, uh, this, is a, this is a counterpart that would would appeal to you because it's people doing public access television. Oh, that's amazing. So if, if I can talk you into coming down there, Travis, uh, these are the people you can, you could become, uh, let's see. Well, it's in here anyway. There they are. That's amazing. So they they do a, they do a good job, and we trained them. CCTV um, in the year two thousand. There was no cable. There was no TV. There were radio stations that were very big, and then cable came in, and there was nothing local. And we went down there with um, five little cameras. CCTV gave us some outdated VHS editing equipment, and we did a, a, um, a course there for three months and trained 18 people how to use, how to document what they thought was important about the, about the area. That's amazing. <laughs> That's it, amazing. It, it was. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of them are now doing the TV stuff. You know, a lot of them are, uh, some of the people that are sending up videos are part of that. What do you feel like you've learned from the folks that are doing, um, that are going and recording their videos about their community, much like how we do it here? What do you feel like? Do you feel like it's similar in a lot of ways, or do you feel like there's you know, really what, glaring differences? What was very different um, was people hadn't seen television. Mm. And so there weren't, you know, once you've seen enough television, you, you, you kind of make your stuff fit it. Yeah. And there were shots, uh, there were beautiful shots that, that were like, um, one guy, we, he, he wanted to take, they, we had some little cameras, mm -hmm. and he went up to a village, and he came back with seven minute long sequences. Oh, you know, none of that. Yeah. And it would be great, it would be like, uh, He'd, he'd see a girl way off in the, at a village walking across the field and just on there. And it took, took her five minutes to get 
and then she'd stop and talk to someone, and then she'd hey, follow her up on the porch. And, and so it was, it was very interesting to see how much of um, those of us that had seen television were, were informed by it. And it, that's become much more now. I mean, now with it, you know, it, yeah. they have a news band, and he, you know, they, they had a big issue about whether he should wear a tie or not. Oh, yeah, so now, now that they've seen more and more television and media, it's just been, you think that people went through, they've seen a lot of television and media, they eventually start to try to emulate it, but like before that, it's just when they get. Well, yeah, and they, they and they hadn't seen television. Um, you know, this was a really remote part of the country. Mm -hmm. Cable came in in uh, 1986, I think, and and then they were they were watching uh, Brazilian um, soap operas, which are pretty interesting, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing local. So, you know, sometime it would be really fun to show some of the stuff. Um, that, that, that was done in the year 2000 with these people, and and there was a there was a church that sent someone. Ch churches are very big there, Moravian Church, um, the uh, Con Consejo de Ancianos, which is a, a indigenous governance system, sent a really interesting guy. He's the guy that went up to villages and phone, oh, filmed. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. Oh, wow. Wow, it sounds, it sounds amazing. Um, and I will say, cause, because we're trying to get people in Burlington to be aware of this thing, it's, it's been, um, in, in the 80s, p people in Burlington were, were um, collecting material goods. For this. It was in the news all the time. In the 90s, Burlington ran a, um, a tree nursery for after the war you know, uh, fruit trees, um, pr pretty much in, in the year 2000, I got interested in video and public access, mm -hmm. you know, getting that. And um, it's always been, it's always had the flavor of the people that are involved. And so what we're trying to do now is get people to be aware of this connection. And I think it's one of the big resources of Burlington to have this, you go down there and they say, oh, Burlington, I mean, you're, you're home. Yeah. You're home. That's amazing. Um, how does someone get involved with, um, is, it, is it something you have to take like personal responsibility and just go to Puerto Cabezas and figure it out? Or is it is well, there more of a system? We have a board. The city of Burlington puts $2,000 a year into it. Um, it does it for its other sister cities too. Um, we have a board. We, for a while, were meeting every month. We haven't been since COVID. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, the, the, what, we're, what we're doing now, I, I am hoping to, to take a, dele, delegation, a dele, delegation down in, in um, probably February. February, March is a good time to get out of Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people can, there is a website, www. Uh, uvm.edu slash sister city that, that they can they can um, they can reach us um, we're looking for someone to redo the red the, the, the website it's been I did it a long time ago and I, I don't it doesn't even a lot's <laughs> changed <laughs> technology has has changed and so what I'm trying to do now uh, to to make Burlington aware of this incredible place is there are people down there that are shooting video with their cell phones, mm -hmm. with their smartphones, and great stuff. And um, I'm, I've got a guy now that is uh, trying to do do an interview with the mayor down there. There's a new mayor, and um, just keep just keep the uh, connection going. Yeah, and. Um for you personally, what do you feel like? What do you feel like the future of this relationship could be, or what think, are some like personal goals? Yeah, as well no, that... I think it's up to who gets involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always been connecting people, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and the connections are, are are the most important thing. Yeah, you know, and and uh, I think we'll find some. I'm, I'm counting on CCTV to to reach out, and get some interest. Yeah. Um, and do you think there, 
Well, are there other sister cities? There are. There, there was after, after this sister city, Burlington um, had one in Yaroslavl in Russia, which I think with the Ukraine war going on, the city is no longer putting money into it, but, but it, it's, people are still going. And there's one in, um, it's a three-part one, in Palestine, Israel, and Burlington, which is a very interesting one. Uh, yeah. Um, and a lot of the problems that they have connecting uh, with, with the situation is, is uh, you can imagine. Yeah. I, lots of tiptoeing <laughs> of, on lines, probably. But there was a period in the 80s, Peter Clavel, when he was the mayor, he, he supported all these things, really believed that citizen diplomacy was, was effective, that getting citizens connecting was, was the way to go. And that was the, the idea of the sister cities. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's certainly worked in, it's been, what, 1984? How many years is that? About 30 some years. Mm -hmm. I think actually it's the same year that CCDV was started, 1984. Yeah, so that's 39 years, almost 40. <laughs> there we go, celebrating our 40th anniversary next year, everyone. <laughs> it was a it was a very uh, interesting time in Burlington. Um, a lot of things were happening. Yeah, and um, do you think do you think would you want Burlington to step up more for? Um, their sister city relationship, or do you think it it just needs to morph and see where like regain citizen interest again to well, see where the, to take it? There there were times when the mayors were were quote, when on that official level there was more. Peter, the, the mayor from um, from Puerto Cabezas, and Peter were very close, and he he came here or they went. Peter has been down there four times. You know Peter Clavel? Mm -hmm. I've met him a few times. He's, he's, a, he's a very strong, he's on the board oh, of Sister awesome. City, very uh, strong supporter. Um, but on the official level, I don't think it's a top priority anymore for either place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Miro is, I mean, he's, he's the mayor now, but I don't think he's out beating the bushes to get the, uh, sister city connection going, um, which some of the mayors did. So there have been times when it was more official. Okay. I would say that the most important connections right now are the are the connections that people have made. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, there, there are a lot of people that are sending videos now, which is great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say? Um, no, I just, I just I think it's time to, um, to let Burlington, you know, and I don't know how many people watch television anymore, um, th that there is a sister city and that there, is a, there are opportunities. There have been great things with musicians. I always... Um, I, this, is a, this is a poet. One of, the, one of the mosquito poets. Oh, wow. Um, All the books. <laughs> All the books. I love it. Uh, there's, there are, oh, it's just, well, this is a, this is a band. You know, one of the um, themes that you run into is called autonomy. Mm -hmm. And this, at different times, that coast has been autonomous. It's been its own thing. It's been a British pr protectorate. Uh, it's part of Nicaragua now, but it has, but it's autonomous, mm -hmm. whatever that means. And you can ask a hundred people. Yeah, and they'll all uh, give you a different answer. They'll give you a different answer, but it's, but it's a, it's a distinctly, it's a separate region. Um, this is a couple of um, uh, musicians who came to on the on this side, no, oh, on this side, on this side. <laughs> Backwards, uh, who came who came to Vermont, and then they played. One of them had never been out of Nicaragua. They they got they got here. Uh, they came on um, People's Express. Somebody took them down to uh, one of the stores to get a new shirt. 
and then they appeared at the uh, Ben and Jerry International Music Festival with Pete Seeger. <laughs> so I mean, there've been there've been highlights. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, along the way. Um, this is food. I'll just say something about about the food. There's there's a thing called rondon, which is means run down, but it's a it's a stew, and then then the uh, vigoron is a she's a lady that's been selling it on the street for for years, and but it's it's, it's a. I I think uh, uh, I, it's it's a it's a it's not like the rest of Nicaragua, mm. and there there has been. An isolation you used to have to it took about eighteen hours to get from from Nagua. There was a ferry boat, you know. You get on the ferry, pull the rope, and it it was always flooded. And uh, last October, they put a highway in with a bridge that oh, wow. has totally changed the landscape of the city. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they're positive and I'm sure they're negative effects, but all of a sudden getting from Managua to that part of the, co to the coast is much easier. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good for tourism, I guess, but it's also bad for tourism. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, thank you so much for sitting down with me and kind of giving me a fuller picture of sister cities, the history of it, and also the history of Puerto Cabezas. Um, thanks for watching. Um, this has been Tommy Nikki TV. I'm Travis, here with Dan. Um, thank y'all. In 1984, the City Council proclaimed Burlington, Vermont to be the sister city of Puerto Cabezas. This port community of 20,000 people is on the isolated Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. Welcome. Welcome. I think that what this is about, a sister city relationship between Burlington and a similar type city in Nicaragua is of extraordinary importance through visits with Nicaragua and welcoming Nicaraguans here through contributions of medicine, educational material, agricultural material, we will be able to stand up definitively for peace and for the needs of the people rather than for war and destruction. of Puerto Cabezas Municipality, which happened to be Burlington sister city. And uh, this should be one of the main street, main street because we have two main street. And you may see this one phase and not all our phase. So basically we want to introduce our hometown after 25 years of relationship with you people and uh, learning about ourselves and hoping that this also give you some light and some image of what Bilwi is today. Well, we have to understand that here on the east coast of Nicaragua, there are different ethnic groups that are living here on, on this part of the, of the east coast. We have the Miskitos indigenous and also the Sumo Mayagna indigenous. But then also, we have the Afro-descendants, and we, we speak our Creole English, you know, we speak Creole English, and we also, we have some of us that speak also uh, Miskitos, because that has to do with the, with the relationship that the, the Creole people has with the Miskito uh, people also. So it's a, it's a mix of culture. During the revolution, since 1980, the government have had this big cultural program that what it does is to, to this program aim to to build the native skills and culture 
of the different groups here in Puerto Cabeza. Arts and mu music and culture link with identity, it link with self-esteem. And um, we can see that the self-esteem of the indigenous people, of the Afro-descendants people, is, is, they, they break this barrier, you know? And they, 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 they came out and they said, okay, we are here, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are living in a multicultural uh, country. Right now, we are in the stadium of Puerto Cabeza, you know, because today it's a very important day here in Puerto Cabeza that they celebrate the king and queen. You know, when, you know, these people celebrate the king and queen in remembrance of once here on the Atlantic coast, they used to have king and queen. And what they do, what they do is um, try to represent the way how the um, indigenous authority system was during the British, when the British or the English people was here on the Atlantic coast. Okay, you can see the people that comes in, coming in right now, these are the people from Kukira. That, you know, they have, they becoming, that, that's, that's a group that is inside, that is just one community that bring in the king, the queen. Each village start to make presentation and what they do, they start to present and dance, representing the different natures and things what they have in their community. Now here you have, this is from the community of Betania. You know, these, these people are preparing also the activity. You know, this, this is the musician. The, and we, which one of them going to be dressed as the king and the queen? They are preparing the, 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 the material that they will be using today. They usually use this custom made out of tuna, and which it represents definitely the, the way how the indigenous people used to dress. You may see, you may see the king with this dressing like the way how the British wanted him to dress, but then you will see these indigenous people also dressing in their, in their way, the way how they feel like they, they, they wanted as indigenous people. Right now we are in one of the, the place that they built for one of the king and the queen. This is from the community of, of uh, Sangnilaya. Now you, you can see this, that. This, this is made by a deer skin. You know, they cut a wood, they cut a wood inside of it and they make a, a deer skin out of it. This is a guitar. This, this is like a guitar. They use a grater with something to scratch, you know? This is the other part of the music. They use a hickety back. You know, take out the, the, the meat out of the, the, the shell of the hickety and they use it for the music. This girl here, she's the artist. She be making music. She have about two or three CD that she made already. Now oh, here, you're going to have all the different type of animals today. Too. You see, you have a monkey, you have a parrot, all the different type of animals that they have, what we have around here. The people always bring from their different community. And um, mosquito music also have to do with dancing, you know? And um, when, when, we, when we dance, um, our, our way of dancing are unique and it represents also um, when we dance we, 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 we try to represent some uh, things that they do in their village. On the dance they make the movement how that they uh, activity is in their community. Like to say that they go to the bush they go and take out the cassava. They go down take, put on the side, right? Down, take, put on the side. And if it's to a um, woman's side, woman is on the river, they is washing clothes, taking it, and keep washing. And, but we have all kind of uh, movement. They have the king, they have the queen, and then have the soldiers around them. They will be given a prize for the best king and the queen here in Puerto Cabeza. <laughs>
is the Afro descendants who bring in this cultural dance by the name of Maypole. What is the Maypole? Maypole is one of the most important um, traditional festival of the Afro descendants, from the Creole people in, in, in Bilwe, Puerto Cabeza, and also in Bluefish in the south part of the, of the Atlantic coast. The May month is the uh, Afro descendant month because it's the month of water. During the month of May is when we have, when the summer is over and we started to have the first rain. The seeds what was planted in the ground started to grow and started to flourish and... That's the month when everybody have something for eat. And it's the happy month. So the first of May, uh, they celebrating, receiving the month because it's, it's the month what they represent in life. And was a way that the Afro descendant was giving thanks to the Almighty, giving thanks to God, giving thanks to the nature. We have a maple. The maple represents the type of food. Water is the fertilization. And they uh, dance around the tree and we can have it like representing the month of the production. The fertilization is representing the woman and the, the, the pole, the man. That Maple Festival, what they used to do is also um, cook and bring out Creole dish. Um, they had different dish. One of them was by the name of um, Rondon. You have Rondon out of beef. You can make it out of shrimps, lobster, out of fish. This is shrimps. We call shrimps. Give it a special flavor. You cook with the skin. Because the skin have a, um, a special taste. Here, this is a crab. Ah. Yes, crab is from the sea too. Uh -huh. Well, fish, all of we know the fish. And this is lobster. You have to put coconut. That's why they call it rundown. This will go with white rice with coconut milk are with rice and beans, are beans and rice. This is coco, kekiske, we call it in French. Peel potato, carrot. This is chocho, but you cut it in pieces, you know, chocho. These four things you put first to, to cook with the coconut milk. While these don't have cook, then you set and tap the meats, what we have here, all the meats, one time together on top. All of these give a special, special flavor. So this is the ingredients, what you put. This is celery. Give a, a nice color. Just put one of these. These are special Caribbean ingredients. Cover uh -huh. it, make just, ears not get in. You just set it on. You wait uh, 30 minutes to, to boil all those um, things what I put here. You see, that is the real tradition of the Atlantic coast. Yes, it's, uh, at one point it's sanctioned, it's acknowledged, it's celebrated by city government. But it's not about city government. It's community-based. People create the relationships that they're interested in. 
and sometimes uh, those might be at odds with the formal uh, city pers perspective. This difference between a sister city program that only uh, manages relations between the, the city councils and a sister city program like this that brings people together. How would you like to explain that a little to the people? Because sometimes it's confusing and people would believe that a sister city program is only with the alcaldia. And we the people don't have anything to do with that. But this has been a different experience. But I know some of them do work from alcaldia to alcaldia and they're very formal on that level. And uh, we don't have that kind of support. So if a group of artists wants to come and connect with artists here, they do it. If a group of uh, teachers wants to connect with a group of teachers, they, they do it. So we're a little bit more unmanageable than some of your sister cities. <laughs> well, that's the problem when you have a uh, civil society. That's people. right, exactly. <laughs> the downside is that, no, we don't have the funding that we want, but the upside is that pe more people are hearing about it because we're reaching out further. We're going to go back with pictures and knowledge and, and a group journal, and we're going to be able to educate our college. It's people to people. It's very uh, organic. Things just happen. Elvis Diodoro Finley Masanto and Mary Monroe Brooke shall live together as one. Un solo unión. Haz la cum. De hoy, de hoy adelante es Elvis Finley y Mary Monroe Brooke. Vamos a unir juntos en un solo unión. Haz la cum. Together is one. We've been happily married for 12 years and have two children. They're really our sister city offspring. And uh, so at a personal level, you can see that the sister city program has meant everything to me. And we just hope this people people link, grow and flourish and continue to bring us together. And give regards to my people them in Vermont. Yes. Burlington, the whole hemispheric of that place, that we love them. And every time they visit us, we feel good. That's all we want, Dan.